especially if you get an early kill on her. One of the big things too for FBX is the facilitators of this team. So if you have Ezreal as your ADK for LWX, maybe they can get crisp onto the map more. Oftentimes we see him ganking for Doran B, you know, with Tien to be able to then let Doran B have more reign over the rest of the map. Also, this Nautilus could very well uh, still be a solo lane Nautilus. Doing be going back to his roots playing that one, but with the last lock in, it's not. And there's your AP. Yeah, fine pick uh, Rumble top lane right now. Quinn will most likely try and follow the Renekton. Uh, let's see what IG decides to do against Rumble specifically. You can always pick the scaling split pushers against Rumble that will just make his life, you know, impossible in the late game. In this case here, though, I think IG are just going actually very safe with the Syndra mid. Yeah, Syndra here for Rookie. Definitely a singer, signature champion as well. It does make things very spicy in that mid lane with Syndra Gragas being the combination for Invictus. If you come through with the flash available on Gragas, uh, any of those melee champions for FBX, even though they are all flexible, they could still be moving them around. They're all melee range. Rumble auto pushes. Renekton has to and get fairly far And it could be Rumble mid too. as well. Doing B does play Rumble exactly. mid. Well, we got a few seconds left to find out where it's going to be. And it is Doing B Keeps playing the, the Rumble in the mid lane. So gankable. Now, gankable. So early game could be huge for IG potentially looking at those many matchups you're just talking about, Kobe. Yeah, and Rumble Rumble can be a very powerful mid laner um, if you have the proper wards and jungle support around it. But I just feel like that is yeah. going to be such a hot spot here. And even on the top lane. Come to Summoner's Rift in Madrid. And let's take a look at Doing B's Rumble. Is that a predator I see? <laughs> what is that going to tell us about where Doing B wants to spend his time? Yeah, maybe? this is going to be full roam Doing B. We kind of set it up. Everyone's been talking about how much FBX roam around and try to play the map in transition. Their focus is so much on pushing these waves to find those openings to roam. Now, he does have to go get his boots first, but he's got teleport. And this is, we were talking about Rumble's laning, especially in mid lane, auto pushing. That's exactly what you want to do when you have a uh, summoner keystone like this. But if you want to do it, you need your jungler around you so you don't get early ganked and shot down. We know Doing B loves to have Tian play to his lane early, so he gets off that first recall. I think Tian is just the person you have to look at in this game. The draft from FPX, super risky. They don't really have like amazing lane setups where they can actually just like withstand the normal matchup against IG. Quinn versus Renekton, we know how painful that can be for Renekton. You can't get close enough with the dashes. Quinn just jumps away. So Tian in the early game, I'm looking at both soul laners. He needs to protect doing B first, and then he also needs to stop Gimgoon from falling behind. Well, isn't this the exact style we were expecting? FPX with this unique type of drop, unique style of play. They've gone for a level one invade already, challenging in, and if I recall correctly, FPX have challenged many blue buffs throughout the playoff stages already. They're gonna secure this one uncontested for now, and we'll keep our eyes on how Ning decides to respond. It does split the map early in favor of the Shy. I actually think he's pretty happy with this one. He's like, thanks, you know, I now know your bot side enemy jungler. I'm Quinn in the early game. I have range advantage, as you can see right here, against the Renekton and I cannot get ganked in the first couple of minutes. Also, as you can see on the minimap, uh, Rookie is playing just as aggressively as the Shy is right now, pushing up with the Syndra, trying to harass the Rumble. It's very clear, um, as you're talking about with the split map like this, that they know that Ning will be split to the top uh, triangle of the map, so it's very easy for them to know where he will gank from, and bottom side will be the focus from FPX. I also have to keep in mind, again, the CC setup for FPX, especially around mid lane, is not very strong ag against Rookie. It's not like the other way around, as you highlighted, Kobe, with the Gragas coming in, stun from Syndra. You know, if you're caught out, caught out here as the Rumble, you just die. So let's see how then Doing B decides to play this lane or how Gimgoon handles the pressure, because we know IG solo lane is stronger than FPX. We know FPX jungler stronger than IG. And now we've seen that first back from Tian. Let's see what direction he's going. If you look at the stats on your screen, jungle proximity a little higher for Tien. But we know the impact that he has to have to help balance the mismatch in skill from IG solo laners. Let's see if they go for the smite fight here. Both smites are available. Can he get the burst damage with Barrel? Oh, going to be a fight, and it is picked up by Ning. So he's able to balance out the theft of his own bluff, uh, blue buff earlier. But go back to that discussion. Yeah, he's able to combo with the full Gragas damage there to burst it down so Tienz doesn't have a window to smite it. 
Now we get into the interesting part, though, because Invictus Gaming, with the double range into melee matchup for solo laners, getting these early pushes, uh, definitely setting them up for a big, big gank towards mid lane. CTion actually hovering around the Raptors on that ward, though. Literally holding my breath as Doom B with that overheated flame spitter puts a lot of damage onto Rookie. And he goes for that because the phase rush is down. You just saw the phase rush proccing earlier in the last trade uh, for Rookie, trying to make use of the extra uh, mobility so he doesn't get caught during the flame spitter, just run at you style trading from Rumble. But we actually see the Shy going press the attack on top side, not going for a phase rush of his own, going for more burst damage. Rookie's the target. Oh, Rookie's got the flash classic available move. to him. He's low on mana. The dive is coming Wrong side. in. The ward oh, comes down, so Rookie spots it. Great heads up play, and Rookie survives with his life. It's such a standard play from FPX. Tian and Crisp together will move towards the mid lane, allow Doing B to push forward, allow him then also to get a good recall off here. They're trying to force Rookie back earlier than he wants to. He's low on mana. They know there's not a lot of kill pressure on him. And they, because they started bot side invading that blue buff, they had early push as well with the Ezreal and Nautilus. That sets up this first roam towards mid. So the whole thing is connected between jungle and then mid and bot lane here and how they start level one into then this move towards the mid lane. Good play from Rookie though. He's played against FPX before. He knows <laughs> there is a chance and he walks over the wall. Yeah, Doan B taking the advantage of Rookie's recall here to go invade on the jungler. See about how this top side turns out, because it's an early purchase of the Berserker Greaves for the Shy. I kind of touched on him missing out on some of that extra mobility of the phase rush, uh, which really allows you to kite the Renekton, but he invests so heavily early into mobility with the upgraded boots that he's going to have a very big difference in speed, and that's what matters. Like, it's very easy if you hold onto your E as Quinn to interrupt the slice and dice from Renekton every time, and if he flashes on you, you have your cleanse. Exactly. It's very, very hard to get all in for the shine, that's all that matters for him. He's been enjoying the early game again with kind of the split map initially and then Ning winning the blue buff. And that's kind of the thing again about FPX here. They pick blue side in this one here. It was obviously to try and grab a power pick like Kiana in this case. But when they then move it to the jungle, they didn't actually secure super strong solo laners for themselves. And that was going to be one of the big things in this matchup. Can IG just counter pick solo lanes, get the advantage pure through laning phase, not even like late game team fighting or anything, just laning phase. They did initially in this one, I mean, they'll have it for top lane and Rookie did also have the early push. It's exactly one of the reasons why I feel like Kiana is so much more scary in the hands of, of an Invictus Gaming uh, than on FPX's side. But still, we saw a little glimpse of it. With Crisp roaming in addition to Tian, if they can link up, the Nautilus does provide that setup. That, that was the one for. roam you're going to get based on level one, right? It's going to be hard for him now against Varus with Ezreal to actually match push that easily. The way you stop it now is if the rumble with Predator and Boots available now, when he, whenever he moves into the shadows, enemy bot lane will be scared and they'll start backing off because they can't really defend against a rumble ulti. So now when he goes into the, into the, to the river, bot lane gets scared, they have to try and keep vision on him, but they will lose the vision war and now... Coming. They can just walk away. I absolutely love the vision toggle there from the observers, highlighting what FPX was playing with. Victor's giving oh, all rumble able to secure the scuttle crab. Balan's gonna try Taxi's way to victory. Gets a good pop rise, flashes over the wall. True shot barrage almost secures first blood in the semifinals, but not just yet. Honestly, this is this is so nice for a jungler to see. It's a family effort to take this scuttle crab. <laughs> Everybody coming over. Oh, flash! That's the flash into the stun, call the meek. Now there's no flash to chase. And the Shy escapes. Remember, early Berserker's Greaves plus that flash defensively in combination with the cleanse. Now, can it be rinsed and repeated? That's going to be the follow-up question. Crisp is moving into support. Tian and doing B. That's a great stun into the piercing arrow. Invictus with Jackie Love are on the board. FPX thought they could get everything right here after actually winning the initial fight, forcing Bowland back to base. They invade in, but Tian, he's of course extremely squishy on the Kiana here. Great setup from Rookie into the snipe from Jackie Love. I like the focus of the Invictus skimming players on that blue buff fight right there. Just take another look at Rookie and Jackie Love's positioning. They're not throwing damage at the blue buff at all. They save all abilities for the setup focusing on the champions. Well, Invictus Gaming also are able to get the smite, uh, finding the extra snipe there at the end means that first roam extra kill 
No flash top, first roam from doing B. I don't think ulti is available. Oh, uh -huh. didn't see that just yet. Kim manages to tag with a harpoon once and twice, but the wave wasn't quite crashing under the tower. Look at the mini-map. You can already see the junglers starting to move north as well as rookie. And what I love to see from Ning, once you get these roams, up, especially top lane, is you try and intercept the rumble on his way back to mid lane. You force him to take longer routes so he loses more CS. He's back top, though. All right, the equalizer comes out as well as the stun. Really nicely set up, but there is a counter. The barrel comes out from Ning. Goon Goon gets killed. It's a one for one. They could go for a repeat dive here. Tian has ultimate here for key. No, no, it's now. No, oh, so much trouble. Supreme display of talent, I think, is available there. He gets thrown out. Ning manages to avoid the hit. It's the tower coming. shot onto Doing B. He gets slowed down by the barrel, and the overheats W will allow him to escape with his life. Tian continues to chase. Baolan gets caught up against the wall. Locked down. Blast cone over. And Baolan secures the kill. So IG, they already saw Doing B go top once. He didn't have ulti that time. He then stayed around because Tian joined him. Ulti was now off cooldown, and they saw the Quinn without a flash. Went for it, but IG ready. They were ready to actually respond to it. And fun fact, last time these two teams played against each other, it was IG perma ganking top and doing this against Gimgoon. Now it's actually FPX with the first, should we call it two roams from doing B, going towards top lane to try and stop the Shy from getting a lead. And because of this play right here, you can see on the minimap right now, this makes Alistar turn the trajectory. He was going bottom side, he ends up going top oh, side, and that cost him big. Ning flashes in, he's around there for the counter gank, and they're able to answer one for one back. As you know, they continue with the dive though, and it's very easy with uh, Kiana, goes in with the water element to root him down, but teleport from Rookie means that Syndra will arrive, and this is Baolan's change in trajectory that I was talking about arrives in time on the Alistar. There is a cost to this though. As we get back to live, you see the turret plate that has been taken from bottom side as well as the extra CS. All right, we have indeed. Crisp is gonna get caught out here. Yeah, uses the stopwatch teleport, now starts to get channeled. Equalizer comes down, can FBX turn this around? Bowler manages to chase forward. That's a great chain of corruption, spreading across the FBX front line. It's a one for one thus far. Both junglers have gone down. Rookie's able to flash away from the bird power of the Shy's Quinn, and yet another fight. And it's a big problem for FBX. Whenever they walk into this river, Rookie's there, he ulties first, then he lands a guaranteed stun on targets without flashes. So it always gives IG the edge when the fight starts. And even the Shy was moving from his lane with the ulti to join whatever was left of this skirmish here. All right, the Shy managed to get a good trade here onto Gimgoon. I'm just gonna quickly show you the stats of that. The last time they met Deficio, FPX lost the only best of series to IG. I wanna draw your attention to the CKM, combined kills per minute. 1.1 on average across that series. Why are you in the river with no flash and you have no, no priority in your bot lane? Rookie takes advantage there, sets up the stun. And I like the stopwatch usage as well here from Ning. You can tell his eyes are on the offensive look. When Jackie Love lands the Varus ultimate, sets up for a very e easy Gragas ultimate, even as he's dying with his dying breath, gets another kill in place for Jackie Love. He has been left on his own in the bottom side when Chris, uh, or when Balan's gone roaming. Ah, that's a dead Ning. And the story I was trying to tell before we get interrupted was when these teams fight, they're extremely active and high kills. Combined kills per minute, more than one kill per minute on average when they met last time. Yep. The league-wide average in the LPL is 0 0.84. So it's even more impressive for a league that is very, very kill heavy. And we're getting a taste of that already this season. I mean, 100%. This is what happens when you have one team with a mid laner who's constantly roaming and another mid laner who's matching it, and they just want to fight all the time. Shy is going to die. Yeah, he's going to die. We might need to get a second play by play if this action keeps up. Nine kills in 12 minutes. Turret plate starts to go down. Rookie's got his ultimate available. So if he can find a juicy target, there might be something up. And I just want to highlight again another reason for why FPX are doing this, even though it's not the typical style. They normally attack bot lane with the two bands, Zaya and Kaiser and Varus pick away. They go for the safe bot lane and as well who he can leave alone. Oh, he stayed. He canceled recall. Does he go for the fight? Dominus is not available to him. Great scatter the week from Rookie. I think that stun doing being prevented the follow-up. Very, very true. But so one thing is the bot lane matchup obviously not being one you have to attack if you're FPX. Oh, this is they another tried. fight. You're never going to get a... <laughs> You were saying Rookie, that was just too easy. The <laughs> defending world champion just picks up a kill in the bush. It looked like he put the goon in that one. <laughs> 
Oh man, this is just such a fun way to start the best of series. And actually, it's exactly what we're expecting. Yeah, but how know? tilted are you now if you're doing B? I'm like, mate, I keep coming to your lane. I'm spending all my time killing your enemy top laner and like get you ahead. And then he just dies randomly <laughs> to Rookie because he greets in the brushes right there. Anyway, I was trying to say, <laughs> There's Hold no that TP thought. on the Shy. <laughs> There's so. another dive in the mid lane going on to Fischio. Coming more goes Rookie over the wall. Manages to get the stun. Dunk down by Ning. Now Bowland, he's joining the fray. Ning, don't way oh. too deep. The tower takes him out. Bowland finds himself on the wrong side of a Renekton. Whoa. The dredge line comes up, misses the target, <laughs> continues to escape. Now LWX, he's being dove. Kill Jackie Love with the solo. It's action everywhere. This is LPL action, baby. Let's go. Dive over the map and they're not done yet. Oh man, I had to hold my breath there. It is a thousand gold game in favor of Invictus. And it's kills across the map. 4-0 on Jackie Love's Varus. 3-1-1 one, one on Doon B's Rumble. And no tower has fallen yet. All right, let's see the replay. We get the bot lane one, uh, the one we won. While this is happening, we just had the, the playoff uh, in, in mid lane right here and LWX. Must not have had Arcane Shift ready when the ulti was fired by Jackie Love. Yeah, that was actually so good from Jackie Love. He minimizes the risk at the beginning. He throws out Varus ultimate, steps back out of tower aggro to see if it hits or not. Once it hits, it procs lethal tempo. So then he knows he can go for the dive with the extra damage of his lethal tempo. Finishes off the kill, flashes away, back out to Rift Herald though. And there's no teleport from Jackie Love, so I think this should go to FBX even though the it vision should. is there. It should. Don't think anyone is going to fight you never this know, one. Though, eh? <laughs> but that's the, the the funny thing. For some teams and some players, whenever you want to set up a play, you have an objective in mind. You're kind of planning who you want to play for the top tier. Do you want to do this and that? I think in this series, the objective is just kill someone and fight someone. It doesn't actually matter if there is a turret to take after. If there's a guy in the lane, then he's clearly pissed you off, <laughs> and you're going to go destroy him. I mean, you're looking at a champ select, right? Every every champion is a viable target here, and you've got. Predator on your mid laner as well. Anyways, Rift Herald used topside. Tower is down. FBX full steam ahead towards mid. They can rotate down through the jungle, by the way. And it looks like Gimgun was wanting to do that, but the Shy did manage to back away. Ning throws out the barrels to clear out the wave. LWX has not stopped the pressure top. Oh, and they have Renekton kind of covering for him as well. We're going to fight. That's a flash forward, and Crisp is able to sidestep a lot of the damage. Manages to get the dredge line. Here's the support from Doom B, as oh, well as yeah. Gimgun. The good magic! Supreme display of talent allows for a triple kill for Doom B. They're not done yet unless Jackie Love can escape, and he does. But this will open up the tower. Two of the most impactful teams fight ultimates in the entire game. Rumble and Kiana there. Invictus Gaming flashing afterwards and missing their stun setups for the team fight. Then perfectly layered down there by FBX. And the rewards are twofold. Two more towers going down. And that's the thing, FBX. They survived the early solo lanes through great roams from doing B. Now, this is the start of the fight. Look at this. Low mobility targets near oh. wall. A Rumble ult in the Kiana ult oh. comes in. It hits all the right people. Unbelievable. That replay brought to you by Axe Gaming in What's Your Move? FBX say that's our move to get a huge advantage. Three towers to one. The Infernal Drake picked up. The Herald. There are now 1,500 gold up. And Doon B is popping off. Yeah, we set it up as IG. Can they win the solo lanes early? They had good matchups. They were pushing in initially. But it didn't matter because the Rumble constant roams. The top got him a bunch of kills. And now he picked up a bunch more in this fight. We're now out of laning phase. And Jackie Love and Rookie can't get out of ultis. It was Tien and Doran B with those big ultimates. Now the Rumble ultimate's coming off a of cooldown, but a bit longer on Kiana. Dragon already here, and they're trying to fight very quickly before that CD comes up. No flash on Jackie Love. Always look at. On, at the flashes for Rookie and Jackalov in these fights, because if they're near a wall, actually if they're just anywhere, they will get Rumble ulted. And without flash, they can't actually fight. No, they can't. Jackalov, however, does have two items completed. Blade of the Ring King and that Rage Blade is oh, opposite Oh, flanking though. This could be a big one for IG. Okay, gonna need to try use that Heflax. It's starting to cool down. IG want this fight. The Mountain Drake is going low, but Balan was spotted out and he's plucked off before it the fight not a big one. can really <laughs> carry on. The Shy will manage to get some flight with Valor, moves away. They're still looking for the fight. This is a four versus five. Dominus is on cooldown. That's a fantastic equalizer. Doing B's unstoppable. Picking up the kill onto Ning. 
Well, in the background, the dragon goes down as well. What, what are Vicious Gaming doing fighting that? Honestly, they just lost their support, 4v5. It's a, mount, it's a mountain drake. Not very useful dragon when you're behind. And they give over an extra kill here. I mean, this is, again, biggest team fight ultimates in the game. Both up again, Rumble and Kiana. And they decide to fight it in the worst possible yeah. area with a small corridor there. Exactly. I agree 100% with you. That's the old rule against Rumble around these dragon fights. If Rumble's team is already there at the dragon, you can't walk in because you can't get out of the ult here. Doing me just puts it down in the entrance. And now, even though there's an Nautilus support you can try and kill, you can't actually step forward. You have to just start walking back. Unbelievable. So that extends the FPX goal lead even more. Two and a half thousand, 2,900 at its peak, as you can see on the graphic. And what I love about this, 19 kills in 19 minutes. We're not done yet. And this is the first game of the series. We're going to hope for many, many more, as many of our analysts predicted a full five games. The Shy is now going to be under threat. Teleport is coming out in defense, but Crisp is actually the one that gets picked off this time around. FPX bit off way more than they could chew, and they get punished for it. Deficio is nodding silently. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, sometimes when you constantly look for fights, you will overextend. And, and you're thinking, like, okay, so they've got Quinn, right? Level 11 now for Shy. Can he start getting a side lane pushing for them? Uh, you have to worry about the dive being set up, and they actually get the collapse there. And... Rookie TP'd. I would argue trading a kill for TP is actually in favor of FPX. I know it didn't look very pretty yeah. when he walked in and he was caught, uh, you know, between the two turrets and multiple IG members, but they didn't lose anything else. They got a TP and they still have pressure on the map. They're still the ones pushing in bot. The thing I'd like you to help me understand though, Deficio, is while their TP's on cooldown, do FPX play the map in a way that makes advantage of that unavailable TP? As it stands, they've pressured the tower. But we're past 15 Redditor. minutes, which means we could anticipate just a ton of fights. And then Equalize is going to stop burning down Rookie, but he has his Flash. Deficio, you rightly called out earlier. Flash is available. That's how you escape Equalizer, but now it's opened up the inner turret. Yeah, now your Flash is gone, and, and the Rumble ulti is actually ready very soon. So it's it's not going to be a fun game for, for Rookie and Jakulov after you didn't get an early lead with your strong solo lane. So setup. how do they come back? At this point, for IG, uh, I mean, we're going to get a bunch of big team fights. That's basically guaranteed. I think looking at FPX and Frontline, it's most likely Crisp or Gimgoon who's trying to jump in, and they are at this point not super tanky. So there's always an opening with Jackalov ulti into just bursting down a target. You just have to constantly fight in the open because you cannot fight in a small corridor where the Rumble ult will just kill your team. And as you can see, it's so difficult for Invictus Gaming to get to the open here. They're trying to get wards leading up to the Baron. Uh, they know it's so incredibly difficult to try and contest FPX with all of their teamfight ultimates available here to get the AOE down. So you kind of have to divide and conquer uh, is the only tactic left open to you. FPX did such a good job with that mid-game teamfight. And I think a, a thing we, we have to look for is kind of the, no offense to the shy, but fairly useless Quinn uh, at this point. <laughs> If he ever gets to actually push past the river and then ulting towards his team in mid, you can try to create a five man that can actually get priority in the mid lane in the open space. The problem is he can't push past the river because they're never really getting that control in mid in the first place. So he's playing super scared because he's getting attacked all the time. And as long as FPX control the mid lane with Ezreal, they get access to Baron. And when they have access to Baron, you force IG to walk in towards you in these small areas, and then Doing B can carry. They also have to be incredibly quick with, with the move that they pull out, because uh, Doing B, not only does he have Predator for extra mobility, but Rumble's ultimate you can, can be cast from very long range. So they have to pull off uh, the pick before the rest of Epics can collapse. And since they've got so much map pressure right now, it becomes very difficult to do. Right, so the Baron continues to be threatened here as FPX are pushing their vision deeper and deeper. Just a couple minutes ago, Invictus were trying to challenge wards and couldn't. If you look at the minimap, the Shy is past the river. He's past the river, so he can actually now start moving up towards mid lane, and then FPX will have to kind of think, okay, where is he exactly? Do we still want to push forward, or do we just want to reset? And that does give a small opening for IG to walk in, clear some vision, and get one wave pushed in mid, so that everyone can get past the river for once and try and see the other side. And that's what the Shai is doing. Now you can see now he's in mid, so he pushed out, walks into mid, and then they get 
small things. They can't get everything. They will just get a bit of vision back and then maybe get can, off a good reset. Can we talk a little bit more about that vision as there's no fight going to break out? Because we were discussing how crucial and important both uh, uh, aggressive and defensive wards would be. The analyst has even joked about it. And as it feels for the last three minutes, this has been a war of attrition on the vision line. Invictus, again, they just keep losing control of this top half of the map, and they're grouping to try challenges. Yeah, they don't have too many tools to actually check that vision with either. No trinkets now available. Going to be relying on that heightened senses from Quinn. Uh, will do a lot of work when he's in the area, but the Shy now moving back. Look, bottom lane's being pushed up by Gimgun. Dragon has been started by Apex, and they backed out, maybe anticipating some sort of engage. One of the big things is that there's not uh, a lot of tanky stats in the entire game, but if Gimgun is showing bottom side, re answering that wave, then IG can be fairly sure that uh, with the limited tankiness, there's not going to be a Baron rush. So that's why they're not being too risky with their checks here. I would have loved them to see just someone solo to Drake instead of actually committing most of your team because you just gave IG a huge opening to kill all the vision. Uh, if you want to play for Baron now, you have to go and rebuy all your wards. Instead, Apex, they did this against Fnatic as well. They, they take Drake, enemy team clears Baron, and then the instant say, good, now we can go bot lane. That's our play. It's not just Drake alone, it's Drake plus turret that they're going for. The Shy gets the wave clear though, now we should just get a full reset, restock up on all your control wards, and then put them around the Baron area again. IG did everything they could, as you can see on the minimap right now. They did everything they could to just place as many wards behind in the enemy jungle. So there are now potentially either a TP flanking ward, not really with their comp because they only have Syndra and, and Varus TP, but more like get some deep vision to spot if FPX are actually going towards the Baron or not. What I really liked is while FPX were committing for that bottom in a turret, LWX used the True Shop Rush just to scout out the Baron, make sure nothing was being sneaked. The vision that was placed by Invictus, I believe, has all been cleared out now. Yep, all If I'm gone. looking at that correctly, and as you've mentioned, Deficio, a couple of control wards picked up for Gimgoon. One in LWX's pockets, they placed one inside the pit, and now they're trying to fight that vision back. And that timing window is actually so important. We've waited long enough that the flash from Rookie is actually all the way back up now. There are stages in this game where they're trying to wait out the possible moves here from FPX. Now that they do have possible double flashes on both carries, it's much, much easier to play out that team fight. Yeah, the last two minutes, FPX could have played way more aggressive. It sounds weird to say in this series with the amount of action we've had so far, but they could have group recalled, committed the entire team to keep control around Baron and then only one guy taking Drake to stop IG from actually farming up. They're starting the Baron now. IG don't have any vision on it. Wow, they're gonna finish this Baron. Checking. Ning's gonna get you very late. He's gonna get stunned up. He can't even get inside the pit. That's a kill for doing B. A Baron snuck away and FPX with a gigantic move. And IG have been spending so much time just like staying around the Baron, putting down vision, clearing the, the FPX one. So they could stop this Baron from happening. And then, just on the other side, they actually managed to just rush it down. Crazy play here from X FPX, and they get the Baron. Yeah, now with uh, Ning going down as well, the door is wide open here for FPX. Yep, LWX is looking for a piece of steak. As he hops over the wall, a ring of vision spotted on a potential flank uh, opportunity for Bowland. And he gets forced away, blows the flash. In a turret mid is secured, 12 kills to 9, 5,000 gold up. Just before that Baron Rush was started, by the way, do and be completed is Morella Nomicon. You've got three items on LWX, and you just felt, hey, we've got the damage, we've got the dragons, and they secured it easily. Yeah, Doonby has been the focus of so much discussion, so much controversy over the course of Worlds, and even over the course of his career. They're showing up here, nine kills on the Predator mid-Rumble, determining this game, going for those repeated dives on the Shy, taking away the split push power from Invictus Gaming, bringing those team fights into FPX's hands. All right, now the mid, uh, correction, bottom lane in a turret's under siege. We'll see whether or not Invictus is gonna try to defend. Rookie is just gonna finish that recall. He's got TP available, but likely not gonna contest. They will concede this objective. Six towers conceded. The defending world champions here in the first game, and FPX aren't done yet. There is some positioning, a little bit of a flank as the Shy eats a harpoon to the face. 
And as uh, Duimbi starts to overheat, he is in some trouble. Now the fight breaks out and instantly blowing up Bowlan. That's an easy kill. The equalizer's fantastic across the game. LWX, Hawkin shifts forward over the wall. That's a double. And that's going to be the inhibitor turret as well. FPX, clean, confident, and composed in this win. After that Baron play, the Baron hasn't even expired yet. And the Nexus will fall. FPX, the Summer Split Champions, take game one over Invictus Gaming. What a hard smashing after that first team fight through mid. They took that lead and just ran it home to the Nexus. And we got to see in the first couple of minutes, they get priority bot lane through level one. They use that for a Nautilus roam up towards mid with Tian. Doombi gets to push in, he gets his good recall, he gets his boots so he can use Predator, and he starts going top lane to shut down the Quinn. Over and over, he's like, I have actual bot, I don't need to camp bot, top, again and again. He picked up all the kills, the Renekton and didn't get any of them, and then he just started carrying these team fights with the Kiana as well. Yeah, I mean, up, in, up until that team fight where you see all of Victus Gaming moving towards mid, and they miss their stuns on Crips trying to go for that pick, and get immediately collapsed on, four person yep. rumble ultimate, Tian with the Kiana ultimate, not yep. Yep. more people onto it. It's beautiful to watch. And the amount of parallels between this game one and the last time they met is insane. We're just under one kill per minute. Game time just under 29 and a half, which was the average game time of that best of three. And we're expecting more of it. It was just like a swapped early game because yep. in that series, they were ganking the bot lane over and over. Not this time around. We actually didn't get to see a whole lot happening down there, which was good for FPX because Dwimby kept getting free kills top. I mean, beautiful. Do and be Predator Rumble to open the series. Now the pressure's on Invictus Gaming. They have to figure out an answer to this squad and to this team. How on earth do you answer that? Well, I de definitely think you're going to respect the AoE team fight abilities uh, a little bit more in the draft phase. And we'll have to see if if they actually want to commit harder to split pushing, because it seemed very risky here with so much uh, volatility. In oh, attack the well, Rumble in the early game. We will find out, and for more on game.